Hey, what is up guys? Marcy here, back to do another video, and today I'm going to commentate over a game that I played a little while ago. This is going to be a tournament Highlands game between me and Senna. I'm going to be the Marked of Cain. Senna, on the left hand side, is going to be the Steel Talons, if I recall correctly. It could be GDI Vanilla, one of the two. I had two very similar games against him, and we're going to see what I could have done differently in this game win or lose so this is a pretty classic opening here i'm going for a couple of awaken at the start because it's very good against judah you can use them to emp your opponent's refineries and harvesters and even if he puts down a watchtower if you have an emp to use you can just empty that watchtower and get out of his base with your awaken squad the cooldown is pretty short on those emp blasts they last five seconds for the awaken squad the Enlightened have a slightly longer duration of EMP. It's 7.5 seconds for them, so a increase of 50% for their EMP duration. They have a much larger area of effect as well for that, that imp. Anyways, I've got a couple squads going down south. Uh, Senna is pretty predictable, though he plays random most of the time, so I'm expecting him to be any faction in the world. So I'm going to see if he's building disintegrators in the south. As you see, he's a GDI faction here. And what I can do is I can hover over the portrait of his rifleman. So what I do is I click his rifleman and then I hover to the portrait with my mouse cursor and it will tell me that it will have AP ammo. And if it's a GDI faction, it will show composite armor. If it's a Zocon faction, it'll show Tiberium field suits. In this case here, it's going to show composite armor because he is in fact a GDI vanilla. Now, GDI Vanilla on this map, I don't think is better than Steel Talons. Now, why do I say that? Because Steel Talons have a behemoth which has 10% more hit points than the Juggernaut. And when it comes down to that late game engagement where artillery rules, then having an artillery unit that has 10% more health is just great. That's all that you really need besides a bunch of watchtowers in 1.02+. Now, I do intend to make a balanced patch there is a change list i made a video not so long ago of my proposed changes but that is no longer the change list that i have planned it's ever changing that's why i didn't want to rush into it i've been reading all your comments guys and taking input from everyone i may not reply to all of your comments but i am reading them and considering every bit of feedback So I'm going to take this harvester to the blue type room field. I see that he hasn't taken it himself. Uh, some players like to go there super early, like Futurama Senna, though he tends to not take blue tip so early. The benefit of taking blue type room on your fourth or fifth harvester is that if your opponent tries to Rick, take it to instead, then he won't be able to. He, it will be a wasted journey of his harvester. So I'm going for an, a very unorthodox strategy with Enlightened on three refineries. Now this is a fact, strategy that works great on Tournament Dust Bowl because I can put the Enlightened squads inside of all the garrisonable structures in the middle of the map. But this map here hasn't got many garrisons. One change though which will be good for the Enlightened in this specific patch is the fact that they don't take Tyrim exposure. For some reason, in the base game, in the vanilla Kane draft, cyborgs took Tib exposure. I don't know why. Maybe in the lore they did take Tyrim exposure, but it's kind of weird that cyborgs, uh, that is part man, part machine, took Tyrim exposure. You'd think that they'd be fitted with some sort of resistance to Tiberium. They're, they're no longer flesh, per se. Anyways. I've got that tip trooper out there just to clear out these buildings. Very good for clearing out structures. I don't think there's a better unit for clearing out buildings. It's just super fast and effective at that role. And these engineers are super quick as well. As you see, I'm going to take over his Tyrone spikes. Four spike income. That's exactly what I need, considering how enlightened are so pricey. 
and it's difficult to get value out of them. Now, my opponent here is GDI. He isn't b building any units to go out on the map with, so one can assume he's probably going for hammerheads or building a second MCB. He's probably teching up at the same time. So that's why I'm building a bunch of Enlightened so I can EMP his MCV. But I see he's going hammerheads. He's actually got double airfield hammerheads, which is no doubt a response to my Enlightened strategy. I see that he's Orca struck my shrine. That's something I want to keep alive because I can build a lot of disruption towers. And that's another advantage of Mark of Cain. I get cheaper disruption towers. It's $500 for the Mark of Cain. The Vanilla Nod needs to pay $1,000 for that very same structure. Hammerhead's taking... Actually, I traded very well here. Usually Bias gets slaughtered by Hammerheads, but Senna didn't do a good job with his micro there. He's actually going to lose a third Hammerhead. That's because my units were in the stealth of the Disruption Tower. MCV moving to the middle of the map. I've got two MCVs because I can't, kind of predicted he would go for that. He has a bunch of Hammerheads. I'm now building Spectres because, as I mentioned at the start of the video, this map is all about Artillery Wars. And I'm still continuing to build those Enlightened, just so I don't get overrun by APCs and Pred Tanks, which is sometimes what Senna likes to do. He likes to make overwhelming Tier 1 armies and crush. Try to, he tries to crush you with that. Try to deco force a few shots from those pit bulls by decoying my units. It is a $500 support power. And as you see, it, it does tank a few shots. I think it's worth it for that purpose. Hammerhead here potentially will fall. I actually EMP'd my own bikes there, unfortunately. But uh, I got the Pred Tank. Two Pred Tanks, in fact. Those will die. And I, these days, I always get this message appearing where it, I get disconnected from the server. I haven't been able to fix it. I tried to get in touch with the CNC online people, but yeah, not being able to fix it. Nonetheless, I've become a, an expert at closing that dialog box, guys. If, it, if you see it appear in game here, I, I just close it in like 0.1 seconds. So I did a good job taking over the spikes, but he's took those spikes back. He's not allowed me that long-term advantage, and this was a mis I don't know if this was a mistake, but for some reason all my harvesters got caught in a Q select, and I think sometimes that can happen. It is part of the uh, I think it's this interface lag bug where uh, if if you if the game forgets to deselect the units that you had selected before. And it just adds it to your new selection. And that's what happened there with my harvesters. I've actually got one harvester there that's idle, which I didn't notice. I don't think I noticed that for a while. That's unfortunate. This may have cost me. Nonetheless, I see the Marv. And I think in hindsight here, I probably should have made a super weapon at this point in time. I think a super weapon here would be good, but there was the, the main fight hadn't started yet. The thing about the super weapon is for Nod is you can cancel out shockwave artillery. So it's not just a dead structure for six minutes I do get some utility out of it I see a nice juicy EMP target there with those three juggernauts he's actually running through with his hammer he's hoping to kill as many of these enlightened as he can all of those juggernauts get EMP'd the Marv is taking damage I've still got a couple specters here which decided to undeploy despite me giving a command within well within their range ready to strike but uh, they do take a while to deploy and strike it's about 3.5 seconds before the spectre can shoot that animation is very long so Senna he needs to do a better job here at splitting up his juggernauts he should know that I have a bunch of enlightened and I'm still continuing to build these enlightened because I feel like that's my ticket to victory I don't have my redeemer because what's the point of making a redeemer if the fight is on this middle field against mass juggernaut juggernauts are designed to counter the redeemer if i just build a redeemer he's going to shockwave it and kill the redeemer for free with that many juggernauts that he has what i could have i could have made one though just for a meat shield so my specters remained unharmed orbital strike while generally considered to be a weak support power is very good against specters because it kills the Spectres, and the Spectres have a very long deploy and undeploy time. So you see a lot of players use the Orbital Strike against Spectres. It's a, it's a good idea to do that as GDI. If you ever struggle against them, then that's what you should do. Marv does fall finally, but I lost my MCV in the middle of the map. And they no longer have build radius there to put down double A turrets. I do have one or two there still left, but I'm a bit exposed here. I'm trying to find some angle to engage this army. He's got his own trooper. But that will die if he decides to move that in. 
I don't think Sen ever gets the scanner packs upgrade, but if you do, it allows the zone troopers to detect stealth and a very large radius, as, as much as a pit bull, and also it gives them more attack range. So all of those spectres there seem to be low on health. I need to get those back to the base for repairs, but not before killing those husks. Behemoths and juggernauts leave husks, and that's just one extra... Uh, chore for me to do because if I don't kill the house then it's all for nothing this isn't it he's just gonna build an engineer and he can build an engineer because his MCV is right there he can just put down a barracks and capture that husk back now I didn't include my in-game commentary here because I did rage a fair bit so I decided to dub the whole thing but the nice thing about recording everything to separate tracks is in post editing I can like add this commentary here as you see and delete the original sound that I had but you can still hear the game sound in the background which is great so Senna here is moving in with a named CB I'm not sure if I can put beacons on top of Tiberium if does that make the beacon invulnerable unless the tip crystal is destroyed I don't think so I think it doesn't function like a uh, sensor pod because I know that you can put sensor pods on top of Tiberium and unless you harvest that Tiberium crystal the center pod will remain on the tib itself. Doesn't come off of it. So I'm getting some nice damage there here on these Juggernauts. Very fierce fight this. It's going to go on for some time. A lot of Spectres. A lot of DPS. And he's got a Wall of Watchtowers here, which I can never hope to push in with and light. And that's why I've built Spectres. But I think maybe a couple Beam Cannons mixed in would be good. Just to deal with these and structures that are kind of a nuisance. Have the Spectres deal with the Juggernauts in the back, but also have some medium range artillery just to deal with base defenses such as Watchtowers or even the War Factory I could use those against. Something about Beam Cannons as well is that you can reverse move the Beam Cannon. Maybe that would synergize better as well with the Enlightened because I can use the Beam Cannons to kill the Juggernauts and EMP them with the Enlightened. But in this game here, I decided to go with the Spectre Artillery. And I'm even going to use its ability, which you don't ever see. It's, it's an ability which um, allows your Spectre to bombard by using a beacon placed by a Shadow Team. I did use a Shadow Team to put down a beacon. And you can see I can shoot well beyond the maximum range that a Spectre can normally shoot from. Now, I believe it only works for one shot. The Spectre Artillery can only get one salvo off before the cooldown happens on that unit ability once more. The beacon does get removed. He needs stealth detection for that. Beacons are stealthed, but they are free to place. All you need is a shadow team. And you can actually drop beacons while the shadow team is airborne as well. So I've got a bunch of enlightened here. These will completely decimate this army since I have the supercharged particle beams, as you see this force falling incredibly quickly. A bit unnecessary moving the Spectres in to deal with that, but here comes the Hammerheads. I, I knew this would happen, that's why I had a double A turret queued. And as you see, I'm killing the Hammerheads here. I don't have an expansion on this field, no harvesting operations for me. I can assume that Senna does have in the back there a refinery. He's actually harvesting Tiberium. His MCV is there. Mine is as well, but both of us struggling to take tip on this field. I actually got a harvester there, which must have auto ran to that field. I noticed the blue fields are starting to grow, but it's difficult whilst this fight is happening. Whoever, you know, takes an engage a decisive engagement in the middle field will win this game. So even though uh, I'll get a comment or two saying, leave, why do you not take that blue Tiberium now? Well, it's because I need to focus on this engagement here. I need to take out these juggernauts and I have a shadow team and I'm moving this in. It's undetected. And I'm once again going to put down a beacon to try and deal with that. He, Senna actually anticipated me to go to the blue Tiberium field. Thankfully, I didn't because that's a huge army that you see in his base. So I'm going to once again use that shadow team ability. And you're going to see these um, specters use that bombard. But because it takes five seconds to set up, that's what happens. And that time you saw it got two shots off instead of one. Sometimes the Spectre gets off two shots with the Bombardment ability when it's only supposed to work a singular... It's supposed to only get one shot off, but I've seen it happen more than once. 
Maybe that's a CGF change. I'll have to check later on in the code. Super, um... Wow, he actually put that tier 4 space command up link right next to my Spectre Beacon. So this is going to be perfect for me. Look how beautiful this is here. I'm going to kill the two APCs and the space command up link. He wasn't e even able to sell that. So that's $3,000 down the drain plus two APCs. That was a good use of the Shadow Team uh, Spectre Bombardment Beacon. Now this game, neither one of us have a refinery set up on this middle field. It's artillery versus artillery. I'm trying to make use of these shadow teams here. That zone trooper though, if it had scanner packs, would certainly be detecting this. I get another beacon down, and I think I can just about range these. Spectres will get one shot off here. Five spectre shots coming down. I do get a direct hit, not quite enough to kill all of the juggernauts that are in range. I do get two though, which is nice. And another shot happens once more. Double A turrets come down. If I get this war factory, that would be great. I should probably move the specters in and do a regular attack on that war factory. Finish it off because if I can limit the juggernaut production now, that would be great for me. His juggernauts are still uh, outnumbering my specters. But he can't push in because of the EMP. The enlightened squads are stopping him from going in there. Now, now I have funds difficulty. I think at this point here, I was getting desperate, uh, using these specters now to kill the watchtowers. But he's just going to plant down more watchtowers. He's probably now mining on this middle Tiberian field. I built a Navas Shadow Team to once more use that ability. I could have called in the support power Shadow Teams because they do come out veteran. They're a little less squishier than the ones you build from the hand of nod but something about shadow teams as well that i want to mention is they deal sniper damage and if you queue snipe shadow teams you can kill husks with them because husks take 100 percent sniper damage so you, you can use those shadow teams to kill the juggernaut husks as well with just their regular attack you don't need to use their c4 charges though you wouldn't be able to do that anyway so here comes another one of those attacks this was one of the best uh, uses of that ability and I was confused why did it only work once when it was, it was actually supposed to work that way those four avatars will get him off my Tiberium field I see a bunch of blue Tiberium crystals in the top I'm going to go ahead and grab that for myself both of us in this game have been trying to win out on this middle Tiberium field I've got four avatars chasing this one jug here. I unfortunately didn't catch on to the fact that there was a husk at the blue Tiberium field. Could have taken that for myself, but this is the current situation. I've got a voice again on the front line. He can't see that though because it is cloaked by the disruption tower. And I couldn't really make a redeemer at this point because I didn't have the funds to do so. I've got all my upgrades, supercharged particle beams, Tyrium core missiles. He actually, did he even, did he just reclaim a husk there? I don't know if he did. I'm pretty sure I just heard a husk reclaim sound. Anyway, I've got this shadow team here, which I'm going to use to get a beacon deployed. And he's actually taken my spike over. It's, it's kind of weird me being the yellow faction because usually Senna picks yellow. So I, I get confused in this game. But it is Senna in fact that I'm playing. I got a Heroic Spectre. They gain experience by killing things even with the ability that they have. And it doesn't change from cannon to grenade damage like the Juggernaut's uh, bombard ability. The Juggernauts deal cannon damage with their normal attack but the bombardment ability changes that damage type from cannon to grenade which means it's not good against units such as vehicles it's only good against structures and infantry specters though they have no such change so you can destroy vehicles with that ability which makes it a unique long-range juggernaut killing feature so I got these two heroic specters here. Senna probably getting a bit impatient because I have two jugger two heroic specters on the field. But as you see, Senna's amassed more and more of these jugs. That's a lot of juggernauts. I need to separate my fire as much as I can. 
but this force doesn't look uh, that big from me. I do, I can win still, despite the odds that I'm facing. Also, on, on this map, I can use the Tiber and Vein detonation as well. That was one thing that did balance out the Jug versus Spectre battles before the Tip Vein got nerfed. You could use the Tip Vein and deal crippling damage to the Jugs and then finish them off with Spectres. Now, though, it doesn't do nearly as much damage. Now, my choice at this point in time was to go for Mass Venom. I think I had a lot of options at my disposal here. I could have gone for an Epic Unit. But I decided to go for a Mass Venom strategy. I've got only one air tower down. I guess it does also counter the hammerheads that he's building. But my goal was to try and kill him before he gets an answer to the Venice. Because he wouldn't expect me to go for a mass aircraft transition when he's GDI in the late game. He's expecting me to build more Spectres. That's why he's continuing to go Jugs. He didn't get his Marth back out. I didn't build my Redeemer, but I don't feel like in this game here a Redeemer would have made any difference, guys. I don't know if it would have made a difference. So he's moving in here with a big army. A lot of hammerheads, but those are going to fall to my Sam Taurus. This is this is the main fight here. He's using the radar scan, using his support powers. Four avatars there, which unfortunately were EMP'd by his shockwave artillery, and those are going to get decimated by that jug wall. Those were my units to stop these light tier 1 units from approaching my Spectre force because Spectres can outrange Juggernauts. Orbital Strike coming down, he's got all these support powers coming down, Magmines landing on those Juggernauts but they're not going to do too much damage, you'd have to move those for them to take damage. The voice of Kane surprisingly still alive, I don't know, maybe units don't prioritize killing that. Everyone seems to just ignore the voice of Kane, even though it makes the Enlightened so much better. Nonetheless, though, Senna feeling pretty confident about this. I've still got those two Heroic Spectres still continue to land shots, but I don't have anything else to support these units now. I do have Venoms out. Nine Venoms. I needed more than this, though. But I was cleaned up pretty easily there. I think the thing I could have done better in this game was made a super weapon, because the main thing that screwed me over in that last engagement was the... Shockwave Artillery, I lost my four avatars to the Juggernauts. I needed those to stop these APCs, to stop these pipples. And then the transition to aircraft could have been uh, unopposed. Also, I forgot to mute my phone, so I'm sorry if you guys heard that. Let me just mute that real quick, so I don't get it, any notifications anymore. Alright. So I've still got the two Heroic Spectres alive. He did manage to dodge my EMP. I was hoping to get him on the counter-attack. But uh, I held on pretty well here, considering that I had less income to harvest compared to my opponent. I maybe could have gone ahead and tried to take over those Tyroom Spikes in the mid-game. But it is a tough game to win as Mark of Kane. And here was, I was in a bit of a pickle. I didn't have anything to kill the APCs, to kill the pipples. Uh, but it was difficult for me to predict that this would happen. Because I did have a wall of uh, avatars, well four at least. I got the two heroic specters, but they're kind of useless now in this engagement. Great units against jugs, but I got screwed over by the shockwave. And I think in this game here, I should have built a, ha a temple of nod for that master computer countermeasures. Not Master Leaf countermeasures, as Green Zero put in his questionnaire the other day. But I really should have done that instead. I lost all my Venoms here, and with that, it's going to be game over. Uh, I didn't have a tank either. Maybe a Redeemer would have actually served me well, but uh, that would have just been a target for the Shockwave Artillery. Or maybe I, what I could have done was I could have uh, decoy armied my avatars and forced him to use the shockwave artillery on the decoys and then my real ones are behind that army. That is something that uh, I could do as well in the future just to force that support power out because it is a really oppressive support power. But nonetheless guys, I want to hear your thoughts down below. What could I have done differently in that game, in that slugfest there on Tournament Highlands? And I hope you all enjoyed this game. I am bringing these smaller videos to you all because uh, it's easier for me to upload and uh, I can make them better by 
providing dub commentary over them. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this video. This is Master Leaf. Peace out.